Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome to this lesson on subdivision and smoothing. And if you're following along in the course, Blender 3D Modeling for Beginners, this is lesson nine of that course. So what we're going to be looking at in this course is how to use the options of smoothing and subdividing your object in order to get a smoother surface and to understand when to use what option. And the reason that I've decided to create a specific lesson on this is because as you move forward learning uh, how to model in 3D, subdividing and smoothing an object uh, is something that you learn over a period of time and why one works better over another or, or when you should use them. But it's not something that's generally taught, and I think it's very important to know how to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do in my existing scene is I'm going to leave my ground plane here like so. I'm going to take this window and I'm just going to move it over a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to choose Shift A for our add menu and I'm going to choose Mesh and come down and choose UV Sphere. And by default, if we look at our T, choose T on the keyboard, get our Tools menu. Once you create something, you'll see that you have some options here. By default, you have 32 segments and 16 rings. And that's what the developers have, has decided that when you create a sphere, uh, it's probably you know the optimum amount of polygons that they could use to get a halfway decent sphere. But let's go ahead and change this a little bit so we can understand a little bit more about subdividing. So I'm gonna choose X to delete this. Again, choose Shift A. Go to Mesh, create the UV sphere. That brings back our uh, menu here again. So we can change our segments. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to only 12. And I'm gonna change the number of rings, which is gonna be the vertical edges here, to six. Hit Enter. And let's go ahead and move this up. And I'm gonna choose T to remove that menu. So now you can see that we have, we still have our spherical object, but it is not very smooth. So as you might guess, you know, the number of subdivisions that you have in an object allows a better curvature of your 3D model. So my recommendation is when you create your 3D model, you want to make sure that you have the least amount of subdivisions on your object that you need in order to create the object you're trying to create. The reason for that is the more subdivisions you put in an object, the more time it's going to take to have to compute that in order to render your image or render an animation, as well as the overall file size of your object. So that's why you hear of, um, if you think about 3D models that are created for games, they're usually considered low poly models because you want the lowest poly count you can get into a game. That way when um, you're playing the game and, and it's in the middle of the animation and action, then everything can move much more smoothly. The higher um, higher number of polygons you have in objects, the slower things can be computed. So let's imagine for a minute that instead of creating this sphere, we're really creating something that we created from scratch. Uh, it's an object that we're working on, but it sort of has all these um, rough edges in it. So what can we do to our object in order to get a more curved surface? Well, there's a few things we can do. If we tab into edit mode, we can choose control, control R and we can start adding edge loops. So uh, for example, I can add one here and I can choose S to scale it. And I could try to get it to curve like I need to. And in some cases, depending on what kind of model we're making, that would be fine. But if we're creating a sphere, then we're not gonna be able to, or you know, it'd take us a lot of time to try to go through and smooth this whole surface. So the easy way, of course, to do that is go to our modifiers, choose Add Modifier, and choose Subdivision Surface. And as soon as we do that, we see we have a, a much smoother surface. And that's because it's added a just a lot of subdivisions in it. You can see a lot more geometry here. And if we even bump this up further, you can see it gets even more smooth because basically, if you think about it, it has much more points along the surface to create this curved surface. But even though our object is smooth, if we look at it and if we choose to go to our viewport shading menu and choose rendered, we can render this 
but we can very clearly see the existing geometry in there. And normally you don't want to do that. So I'm going to go back to solid. In order to fix that, I'm going to choose T for my tools menu. And we're going to look at shading. And here we have smooth shading. So by default, we're on flat. And I'm going to choose smooth. And then we got what appears to be a smooth object. Now, what is the difference between creating these subdivisions to get a smooth object and do smooth shading on the object? Well, the difference is if you do a subdivision surface, create subdivisions within your model, your number of faces, the polygon count, is going higher. You're actually changing the geometry of your model. When you do smooth shading, you're not changing the geometry at all. You're just changing the appearance. Uh, you can think of it as the way the camera sees the object or the way the light hits the object. And that's why it's under the shading. When you think of shading, you think of things like the material, um, the specularity, the color of an object, the way it's shaded. All of that is under uh, the appearance only of, a, of an object. It does not change your render times at all. So normally you want to come over here and choose smooth shading on your, on your object. It's going to choose T to, root to toggle that menu away. Choose Tab to tab into edit mode. And when you tab into edit mode, we're not seeing all the subdivision surfaces uh, that is in this modifier. And the reason that they do that is it just makes it easier to work with your original model. Now, when you're in edit mode, you see all your points here. I'm going to choose A to select all. And I'm going to choose W and look in the specials menu. If you look in the specials menu, you see also smooth and you see shade smooth and shade flat here. The shade smooth and shade flat are the same options that you've seen on the T menu. It's just when you go into specials menu and you're in edit mode, you can also do that same function from here. But you also notice that you have this option in here called simply smooth. And if we hover over it and read the descriptions, it's flattened angles of selected vertices which is basically kind of a complicated way of saying we're going to smooth an object. But so how is this smooth here different from the shade smooth? And how is it different from the subdivision surface? Well, the subdivision surface smooths an object by adding the uh, different geometry needed or the different subdivisions in order to make something more curved. But if we choose our W menu again and look at the smooth here, what this smooth option does is it tries to take the existing geometry that you have and reshape it so that is it is more curved without adding more subdivisions. So if I go ahead and choose this smooth, then you see a little bit of a difference there. What it's trying to do is get a more curved surface. Now generally what you would use the smooth option for is say for example if I model the car and I did it fairly manually and I created all my geometry and I had, say for example, some of my edges weren't quite right. I choose GG here and I'm just going to move some edges over like that. Sort of out of shape. And if I choose A, select all, choose my W menu, choose smooth, has its starts to smooth it tends to try to get this geometry back in line in order in other words it sort of gives you a little bit better flow of your uh, your geometry here so when would you use smooth well sometimes you might use it if you are working in a on a complicated object and you want these points to line up a little bit better you can choose smooth and it'll start to smooth out you can also if you like choose faces and I'm going to go ahead and turn on occlude here and say I only wanted this area right here to be smooth. You can choose W, smooth, and it'll just smooth that area. So I'm just going to keep smoothing it. And if I wanted to, I could also use my T menu and come over to smooth vertex here. And basically this is the number of times that it smooths the mesh. So I could bump this up. And you can see if you kept going, it attempts to continue to try to smooth and it will actually start to have um, basically a more adverse effect on your uh, 3D model. So you want to use that with caution, but it can be a very nice tool in order to get your geometry smoothed out. So I'm just going to control Z 
bring that back up. Choose A, deselect that, tab back into object mode. Choose T to turn that menu off. So to give you an overview of these options, you look at the add modifier, which is the subdivision surface. And you're going to use this when you want to add more geometry to the object in order to make it more smooth. This is one of the easiest and nicest ways to smooth an object, but just keep in mind the number of subdivisions you're putting in there. You normally don't need to go above two, but it really depends on what you're working on. So this one does change your existing geometry. If we tab into edit mode and select all and we choose our W menu and we look at the smooth here, you can think of this smooth as more of a localized type of smoothing that is not adding to the geometry. It's just trying to take the existing geometry and smooth it out. So this one is really helpful when you have, you're working in a difficult area where you have a specific area that needs smoothing. You can apply that. And then finally, under our T menu, we have, if I tab back in object mode, this sh smooth shading option, where by default, it's flat shading. You can see that existing geometry in there. And that's just a way to allow the render to show the object without seeing all of that hard edge geometry. And again, just think of that as a change to the way the light's hitting the object, not the change to the geometry. So now we can go to our render viewport shading rendered view and we see a nice smooth object there. So I hope this has helped you to understand the difference between using the subdivision surface modifier, using the smooth shading option, and also using the smoothing option that is available in Blender 3D. In the next lesson, lesson 10, which is the final lesson of this course, Blender 3D Modeling for Beginners, we're going to take a lot of the concepts that we've learned over the length of the course, bring them all together, and we're going to create a fairly simple but nice 3D house. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.